In 1896, Percival Lowell commissioned a Cambridgeport, Massachusetts optics firm for the construction of a 24-inch diameter telescope. Famous for the creation of some of the largest refracting lenses of the 19th and 20th centuries, Alvin Clark and Sons produced the now famous Clark Telescope. Over the years, the Clark would be used by Lowell during his study of Mars. that led to his controversial theory that the planet was home to intelligent life as well as V.M. Slipher for his revolutionary observations of the expanding nature of the universe. After 117 years of constant use for both research and education, the time had come to give back to the telescope that had given so much to American history and astronomical discovery. In 2013, Lowell Observatory staff members realized the Clark Telescope was in danger of being permanently damaged from years worth of dust, rust, and corrosion. Much of the telescope was covered with a light gray lead paint that unquestionably had to be removed. The ponderosa pine dome that housed the telescope would also need repair, as old nails had wiggled themselves loose and the shutter doors had been bent and weathered. The heart and soul of the telescope, the priceless Alvin Clark & Sons two-element achromatic objective lens, was cloudy with grime, which didn't make for clear viewing. Most importantly, the telescope's main weight-bearing wheel was crushed in three places, severely limiting the telescope's effective use. The project officially commenced on January 1, 2014. The crew consisted of engineer and project manager Ralph Nye, archival restoration specialist Peter Rosenthal, machinist Jeff Gehring, groundskeeper Dave Shuck, and woodworker Glenn Hill. The first of what would be many difficult and strategic steps involved stripping the telescope of all removable auxiliary parts. This was done in an effort to protect them from damage when the main body of the telescope would eventually be removed. Within four days, the telescope was completely stripped and ready to be removed from the dome. Workers removed several cast iron counterweights, followed by the two-element lens and the optical tube, which came out in three pieces. The process was one of precision and balance, as heavy and delicate parts alike were lifted by crane through the shutter doors in the dome. The crew designed a tilted base so the thousand pound polar shaft could be lifted out of the dome without being turned in precarious angles. They're going to be removing the, uh, the mount assembly. The pier will be staying in one place, the pier being from the ground up to the platform. And uh, the mount itself will be coming out. And one of the main problems, you can see that it's got some yellow straps around it, is the whole assembly, the declination and the right ascension shaft, which is the polar shaft, is not held in with anything. It's basically just held in there by its own weight. And so we have to keep it from uh, coming out for any reason. Because it could theoretically uh, pop out of there if the angle were wrong. And that would be the end of the project right there. So we're gonna use a, uh, a strap to lift the front end and a chain to lift the back end so they can adjust adjust its angle uh, when they put it on the temporary pier outside. With all parts of the telescope removed from the dome, the crew began to remove the lead paint. In some cases, removal of one layer of paint revealed another layer of red lead primer that also needed to be removed. Equipped with rubber gloves, masks, and respirators, the crew repeated the steps of applying stripper, scraping it off, and washing and drying until all paint was removed. 
The steel was clear coated to prevent future rust. The interior was painted black to minimize internal reflections. It's got to have a, a dull black finish in here to, to knock down the reflections inside the tube. Uh, any stray light that, that might cause a reflection interferes with the viewing. So that's why we're, we're putting this coating on here. It's just a very dull black coating that, that does not reflect the light. And the best way to do that is to roll it on. Every mechanical part, nut and bolt, was evaluated for function and appearance. Each part had to function properly or be replaced, and nothing left the shop without a perfect polish. We're basically refurbishing the, uh, the public end of the telescope here, the part that holds the focusing assembly. And uh, it's, it's in multiple parts because in uh, previous years they had spectrographs to mount on this and uh, it had to be fairly versatile. So it's been a retrofit and uh, we're replacing the, the, uh, the old rusted metal fittings with stainless steel and they'll last forever. And uh, we're going to take this down next week and have it painted. And um, all the little holes that have been drilled over the years are going to be gone. So we'll put it back into original form. We're qu quite excited about it. It's, uh, it's going to look fantastic. And it'll work better than it ever has as well. The crew wanted to keep the rest of the telescope's historic look and structure intact. The setting circles, which are used to aim the telescope, required special attention. Rosenthal would hand paint more than 720 tick lines to make the telescope's aim more accurate than ever. This is the declination setting circle. This tells the operator of the telescope where on the celestial sphere north and south that uh, the telescope is being pointed. Each one of these ticks marks is a half a degree and uh, we have a pointer so he, with a vernier on it so they can get uh, a finer resolution but this is for pointing the telescope north and south. And um, this was all rusted and chipped off. And these, hand, these lines were painted with a brush uh, a long time ago. And they were very rough. And so I stripped all this off. And uh, I'm just painting these white lines back on and with this pen. The crew turned their attention again to the priceless 24-inch double lens, the last lens that Alvin Graham Clark, the son of Alvin Clark, ever constructed. The crew first carefully removed three lens retainers, being sure not to push the glass in any one direction, which could cause it to become wedged in its cell and chip. Flip lens. This is a substantial wow. piece of glass. This is. That's pretty nice. Cleaning such a lens requires more than a spritz of Windex and a good wipe. Any scratching or abrasion of the glass is permanent and would degrade the view through the telescope. Workers sprayed the glass with scientific cleaner comprised of alcohol and distilled water, then patted it clean as rubbing is more likely to result in scratches. The lens was then blown dry. The lens was now free to be examined, a rare opportunity the crew used to measure the deviation of the lens. We have uh, three balls on there that are 3 8 inch diameter, and it's on a 5 and a half inch diameter bolt circle. So when we put this on the, uh, the surface plate, the surface plate is flat, so we can zero out a, a uh, indicator. And then when we put this on to the lens, the deviation is the amount of curvature in the lens. And then you can calculate the radius of curvature from that deviation. As long as the three balls are on the lens tissue. And it, here we go. So we come down. So we're going to measure this at a different location. Uh, a real precise lens, it should not deviate from place to place, uh, but uh, we'll find out real quick. Huh. Yeah, I could use um, 27 and a half thousandths. Red. It's amazing. <laughs> So this is the other side of the uh, crown element of the 
24 inch Clark and it's uh, half, half a thousand is different than the front surface. So uh, in 1896, they did a very good job of optical manufacturing for what they had to work with. It's amazing. It's a beautiful piece of uh, optical glass now, especially when it's clean. <laughs> With everything cleaned and all metal polished, the lens was reassembled in the opposite order it was taken apart. Fingers. Air was constantly blown on the lens throughout this process so that dust and stray particles did not settle in the middle of the double lens, where it would be impossible to reach later. The dome is fitted with four large aluminum doors that open to allow the telescope to peer into space. The new doors were constructed by a local sheet metal fabricator. All that was left to do was hire a crane to lift the new doors to the top of the dome for installation. Now, to make sure everything still fit together. and to add the finishing touches. I, just, I like this part more than anything else, I think. Just uh, putting the final touch on it. With the support of philanthropic donations and crowdsourcing, Lowell Observatory was able to raise $300,000 to fund the challenging but necessary task of renovation. The Clark renovation was officially completed in the summer of 2015, after 18 months of strenuous and dedicated work. Right, it moves nice and easy. What an improvement. The Clark Telescope continues to be a mainstay of the visitor experience at Lowell Observatory, Flagstaff, and the greater northern Arizona region. Now more than ever, the telescope is ready to give the public a window to the universe. There's so much to look at. You could stare at this one scene for a long time and not look at the same thing twice. If you enjoyed this production, you may also enjoy the coffee table book, The Far End of the Journey, further detailing the history and renovation of the Clark Telescope, available now in the Starry Skies gift shop.